all day long. Streaming worldwide. That's Feature of Radio. Is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station? This is V81 Radio. Transource Media is dedicated to provide reliable, affordable, fast, and efficient services to our clients. We offer services that have been strategically organized to produce high quality results. We are focused on providing essential assistance, such as, but not limited to transcription services, virtual assistance, web designing, audio, video, post production, and voiceovers. Transource Media, your most reliable partner for all your business needs. For more information, visit transsourcemedia.com. Connected ka na ba? Follow us on our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hanapin lang ang V81 Radio. That's letter V81 space radio. At maging updated all day, every day. Kami po ang inyong all hits, all Pinoy internet radio station. V81 Radio. All hits, all Pinoy. Gusto mo ba na lagi kang protektado? HD CCTV camera ba ang hanap mo? Panikuradong 3K security services ang para sa iyo. Authorized wholesaler of HIK Vision, 3K SS, 3K security solutions. Tawagan sila sa 0469706315 or 0929343136. At para sa mga kababayan natin abroad, magtanong at i-email sila sa 3K SS trading at gmail.com. OTK hanapin ang kanilang Facebook page at facebook.com slash 3KSS Trading. 3KSS. 3K Security Solutions. 3K Security Solutions. Matatagpuan sa number 306, Aguinaldo Highway, Panapaan 7, Bacoor, Cavite, Philippines. Nagahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya Dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa Iyak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa atin
everyone out there in Metro Manila. And welcome back to yet another exciting episode of Mysterium After Dark with me, Rob Rubin of Mysterium Philippines. And today's topic is basically a topic that's kind of close to my heart because personal fitness goals and pers- weight loss has always been a journey, a mountain for me that I've been really like um, trying to climb for the longest time. And I've tried a lot of things in my day. I've tried weights, I've tried cardio, I've tried wrestling, but then one thing really got me, one thing really inspired me, um, and it was the practice of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, if, for those of you who don't know, I was actually inspired by <laughs> Frank Mir's submission of Brock Lesnar during Brock Lesnar's UFC debut, and when I saw that, I said to myself, now this is something that I got to learn, okay? So with, with proper time and effort, I ended up finding a very admirable place where not only did I learn the practices of jiu-jitsu, but I was welcomed as a member of a family. And the person who did all the welcoming was none other than a good friend of mine, uh, Professor Alexander Sulit, uh, a.k.a. Ali Sulit, the head of Atos Philippines. Now, Professor Sulit is our guest tonight, and he is a judo black belt, also a black belt, a fifth dan judo black belt, and a second, a first degree jiu-jitsu black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Not to mention, he is the present uh, one of the coaches for the Philippine national team. Um, and what I like about his approach to jiu-jitsu is that it's a really ego-less based approach to jiu-jitsu. That's why him and I became such good friends. You see, me having a weight problem, um, he made it work for me. Okay, He said, okay, we got this. You know, you got a weight problem, Rob, but I can see that you're very enthusiastic about learning, about learning this. And for the first time in my life, this man turned me into a champion. So it's without further ado that I would like to welcome the Mysterium After Dark, my good friend, my brother, Professor Ali Sulit. Good evening. Hey, Robert. Thanks for having me here. Hey, hey Coach. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Yeah, thanks for the welcome. <laughs> Happy to be here. So, all right. Um, Jiu-Jitsu, man. I mean, you're one of the guys I really look up to in this practice. Talk to the viewers. What's Jiu-Jitsu all about? And, you know, <sighs> what are the benefits if I'm going to decide to practice it? I mean, for all the listeners out there. Um, Nowadays, it's really not that hard to tell people about jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. Unlike before, it's like you would have to convince everybody how different it is mm-hmm. from the traditional arts like karate or judo and stuff yeah. like that. So because of the popularity of mixed martial arts uh, and the uh, popularity of grappling sports, yeah. you know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is actually a very well-known art mm-hmm. you know, among everybody. Yeah. Everybody just wants to get in. It's, for me, it's the fastest growing sport sport in the world right now. Really? Okay, it's vying for Olympic status. And wow. even uh, our country has will be fielding its first national jiu-jitsu team um, in this coming SEA Games this year. Because wow. it's the first time that jiu-jitsu is included in the SEA Games. It's amazing. And we're the host. So this is going to be a historic thing. Uh-huh. And we're going to be fielding a very tough uh, uh, national team. And we're hoping to dominate the whole thing. Damn. So what got you into it? I mean, like, you were already a judo black belt, right? Before you got into jiu-jitsu or no? Yeah. Uh, I guess it's presli- precisely because I, I did judo already. And uh, jiu-jitsu is a very similar uh, art to mm-hmm. judo. For me, I've always, um, I've always likened it to being two sides of the same coin, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just a different uh, scoring system, yeah. different... Uh, but the skill sets are almost the same. Did you have a hard time transitioning from judo to, to no, jiu-jitsu? Um, it's just right, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, my judo background made it uh, a little bit easier mm-hmm. to transition from judo to jiu-jitsu because the skills that I learned before, and I- even when I was just a judo guy, mm-hmm. uh, of course, judo's focus is to take downs and yeah. throws. It has groundwork mm-hmm. ready, but uh, even back then, I was really... Uh, a more a grappler than uh, anything else really? except that when I was competitive in judo uh-huh. most of my matches would end just because of the throw and it doesn't really continue <laughs> on the ground on the anymore ground. but not a lot of, that's why not a lot of people know that I was into grappling at that uh-huh. time okay I have a question like um, I don't know if this 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 could relate but I I know you teach you've taught jiu-jitsu for how many years now gee man um, I know since uh, 
since 2004, so that would make it hell. <laughs> wow. Okay. Like, um, did you like notice that like the more popular the UFC 15. would become, the more people would want to come join and learn jujitsu from you? Wait, what do you mean? Sorry. Like example, like um, when you know UFC became popular in the Philippines around like 2009, or because we got it free on one station before. Did you notice that, like a lot of people were like rushing in to wanting to learn jujitsu because of that? Or yeah, I mean that's that's exactly how jujitsu got popular uh -huh. with everybody. I mean. Um, in the advent of mixed martial arts mm -hmm. during its younger years, yeah. where people got so dumbfounded. What's this new art? You yeah. know, it looks silly. I mean, it's not as exciting and as flary as um, striking arts, like no roundhouse kicks, mm -hmm. no flying kicks and uppercuts and spinning back fists. You know, instead people got taken down to the ground and it looked boring. It didn't. Look, it didn't look fantastic or impressive, but. Mm -hmm. Everybody saw that it got the job done. You no, know, Hoist Gracie, right? Yeah, exactly. That was around, what, 96? Yeah. 93 or 96? 96. 96. Sorry, I, <laughs> old, some, school. old school. <laughs> old school. And, and because of that, a lot of people, uh -huh. a lot of people wanted to learn it. Uh -huh. okay, but for their own motivations. I mean, uh, I guess that's how you really convince everyone. You got to really market it that way. Okay, um, people who wanted to become tough, yeah. people who wanted to become fighters, yeah. people who wanted to become badass, you know. The, those were their motivations and wanting to learn the new the newest art. So that, 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 that brings me to my next question. Um, as somebody who's been teaching this for over a decade now, what would you consider are the proper motivations for wanting to learn jujitsu? Well, throughout the years, jujitsu has evolved mm -hmm. in so many ways. Okay, um, uh, we actually have more practitioners now, of course, mm -hmm. um, but focusing more on the sport aspect of jiu-jitsu the sport this sport jiu-jitsu not the combat aspect not, not the combat aspect you know, though that you can't do mma without knowing jiu-jitsu yeah that's I mean, for sure <laughs> that's pretty good okay, it's gonna mess you it's, up it's like uh it's like uh it's a given that you have to have jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. okay, or people argue you just have to know wrestling or but that's the thing you're gonna have to learn about submissions and all that and that's all jiu-jitsu mm. okay um but nowadays i'm very happy how jiu-jitsu evolved okay because the the way it evolved throughout the years mm -hmm. um if we fast forward it to now, yeah. look at it now. Who are the practitioners? We've got people from different ages, different genders, okay, um, different weight divisions. Yeah, different sizes. Different sizes. It, it has something for everybody. Mm -hmm. okay? Whether you are a recreational uh, practitioner, mm -hmm. okay? whether you just want to make it a hobby or just something to you know use as a workout, yeah. or if you're the serious competitor, yeah. if you want to become athletic or you, you want to compete locally, you want to compete internationally, there's something in it for everyone. Okay, and uh, the beauty of it is um, normally uh, how jiu-jitsu tournaments go. If you're competitive, you'll be competing against somebody your own belt, yeah. your own rank. Yeah. So you, you don't have to be, uh, if you're new, you don't have to be afraid that you're going to face a black belt immediately. And same weight too, right? Same weight, okay, and same age. Okay, yeah, okay. the masters so, and adults. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's something in it for everyone. Okay. Um, I have a question. Like, for the average Joes who'd like say, oh, you know what? I saw this. This looks cool, but I don't think I can do it. I'm overweight or I'm too thin. What's your take? Like, for the average Joe who wants to get put on the gi and get on the mats, I mean, what would your, your elevator pitch to them be? Uh, here's the thing. I I've experienced that a lot of people would stop themselves from doing jiu-jitsu because they don't think that they're ready for it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a normal response. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, depends on the issues that the person is dealing with. Mm -hmm. If um, they're concerned about how people will look at them, mm -hmm. okay, because they they don't do well in the warm ups, yeah, okay, or they can't get the lessons immediately, yeah. Um, actually, the truth is that doesn't really matter, okay. And it's up to the instructors and the seniors of that class or that team to make sure that the student understands that it works differently. Mm -hmm. And this is how it works, okay. People who want to make something out of themselves, they want to lose weight, mm -hmm. they want to learn a new skill set, just go. Just go. Just go. Just okay, do don't it. stop yourself. It doesn't matter if you're the last guy who, to finish the drill. It doesn't matter if you're the last guy to get the lesson. Okay, As long as if, if they're thinking that oh, people are going to ostracize me or yeah. people are going to judge me. No, no, man. The way we've been doing it, mm -hmm. at least people in my team, okay, if you show up, just show up, you will have their respect. What's it, it? What's that saying on the dojo here in the dojo? We make champions on a daily basis. Oh, that's that's that, that's something I came up with years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this um, uh, motto that I, I put in that dojo because that's uh, that's my original dojo, yeah. and uh, that's where I train my my champion judo team and mm -hmm. my champion jujitsu team. Uh, I just put it out there. It's written on the wall. You know, in this dojo, champions are made on a daily basis. 
And that's actually true because you know what? Um, I had an issue with myself. I was never a champion of anything in my life. And the very first time that for you viewers out there that I ever championed anything, I got a gold medal, was in jujitsu. And it's because of this guy. I mean, coach really saw to it that this was a frustration of mine. He helped me. He made me compete. And more than once did I win gold. And I had a weight problem. I was overweight, but you know, he never gave up on me. So, if, I mean, if I can do it with my weight condition, and I'm willing to bet it's probably worse than most of yours, then what about anybody else, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, like I said, it, this, it's just it's just a matter of showing up. Yeah. You know, um, it, it can get difficult, mm -hmm. but then again, anything worth it, yeah. you know, it, it has its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, for me, my own personal experiences, my own struggles, mm -hmm. and my own successes in my journey. Yeah. Okay. In studying judo and jujitsu, mm -hmm. practically everything in life, man. You know, I, I just uh, look back onto it and find a way to make it relatable for each student that goes uh, in the uh, you know through those doors and into my class. And then I wanted to ask you, who was I mean, for judo would be a different question, but for jujitsu, who would you say would be your biggest inspiration for you to go for it? Because like me, you know, it's Frank Mir, obviously. Shout out to the, <laughs> the champ Frank Mir. I love you, man. But then for you, who would you say it oh, would that's be? That's a tough question because um, when I uh, when I uh, started, it was different. Um, and uh, it's, 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 there are three aspects of me mm -hmm. as, as a jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm I'm a martial artist. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a competitive athlete, mm -hmm. and I'm also a coach or okay. an instructor. Yeah. Okay, so. I guess it's different. When I started, you know, what inspired me to do jiu-jitsu was my brother. My brother what? TJ, my TJ. younger brother, because he took up jiu-jitsu and judo way earlier than I did. Really? Yeah, he did. I always thought you were the first. <laughs> no, 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 no. My, my younger brother TJ. TJ heads his own uh, jiu-jitsu team now. Uh -huh. It's Origins uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, actually, he just opened up his... Uh, new Valley branch. A new branch uh, in New Valley, cool. in, uh, down south. Okay, and uh, yeah, it was my brother who inspired me to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, his his take on jiu-jitsu has always been very um, technical. Technical. And uh, because before me, it was all feel, mm -hmm. you know. And I would succeed, and I would really learn. Just it's just like you know the difference between me and my brother is this because he's the intellectual one. Yeah. <laughs> in the yeah. Right. We, get a, <laughs> we get a new VCR at home. <laughs> he would study the manual to figure out how it works. I'm just I'm just the type of plug guy. Plug it in. Like, you know, plug it in. It's like figure it out. You know, just read. <laughs> The buttons and this probably worked. I was like that. I was like that. But uh, because of my brother, I learned the value yeah. of actually scrutinizing the moves, studying the science behind it, uh -huh. and uh, why it works. And the, you know, like especially in judo, mm -hmm. man, he studied the physics of it. Wow. Okay. And and um, even in um, the scientific part of you know how to do a healthy diet plan wow. or a weight loss program, TJ's really into all that. So shout yeah. out to Professor TJ. Sorry. Yeah, he 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 inspired me to do all that. So it made me. Um, step up my game when it comes to those things. Mm -hmm. uh, what about any A-lister jujitsuos that really? Of course, it's my professor, okay, uh, Professor Andre Galvao. Uh, professor Galvao. Because um, my two instructors, Professor Andre Galvao, and my two professors, and Professor Ramon Lemos, because um, they're competitors just like me. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's one thing to be just a competitor or a member of a team. Yeah. And there's another thing to lead it Damn. and to manage, you know, the the members of the team. And that's what. They've been doing. They've it been juggling being a leader. They've been juggling managing the team, and they're juggling also how they perform personally in their competitions. That's that's a tough job. Is and there ever a time though that like uh, you kind of like uh, lose a bit of your 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 energy needed to compete at the highest level because you're trying to push your other people forward? Yeah, all really, the time. Really, all the time. Like for example, I mean, I can only limit my experiences to when my team and I would go to Japan. Mm -hmm. Though there are other members of my team who Asian go all the Open. way up to the yeah. world championships. Yeah. Okay. Uh, For the record, Professor Sulit is a three-time, two-time gold medalist. Actually, three. You three. got purple belt. Yeah. <laughs> so, so three-time gold medalist in the Asian I Open. I don't count that, though. But yeah, <laughs> two, two at the black belt. Two, two at black belt. Um... Yeah, it does happen, man. I tell mm -hmm. you, it's it's difficult because, for for example, in mm -hmm. my experience, you know, you would spend two to three months preparing everybody mm -hmm. for this major competition. It's yeah, Asia, you say it's Asian level, but yeah. when you get there in J when you get to Japan, it's, it's not just Asia. You got people from the states, from mm -hmm. Russia, yeah. from all over the world who would want to compete there. So you just get a bit of everybody. Mm -hmm. So you prepare everybody for around two to three months. Okay, and at the same time, you have to be mindful of everybody's progress mm -hmm. and yours. Wow. And there are times when you just have, to, and during a session, you just have to focus on one or two guys who need your help, and you would stop at what you're doing, mm -hmm. okay? 
And there are times when you're just fo- focusing so much in what you're doing, you're, you're, you tend to forget that there's somebody out there who, who just needs a little more attention from you. Which reminds So it's, it's really a, a juggling act. It brings me to another question. I mean, like, you're a black belt, and then you're the one teaching everyone, right? Yeah. Um, and of course, I see, I see how hard you train, you drill your moves, and things like that. But the question is, usually progression is because of the guidance of a better person there. Like, I will get better because I have the guidance of you. So how does that work as a black belt? How do you get better knowing that, like, example, Professor Galvao can't be here? How do you judge your progress? Well, I guess all that happened uh, beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the situation and how the jiu-jitsu developed here in the Philippines is quite different from mm-hmm. the States. Uh, we didn't have a black belt here. We were not spoon-fed anything. Our team didn't have a black belt. Here. Actually, for most teams in the Philippines. Okay. For most teams. when it start, We started, like... Um, around early 2000s. Yeah. Okay. And even before that, jiu-jitsu in the Philippines actually started in the mid 90s. Mm. Okay. There were no black belts around. Uh, people just got different materials mm-hmm. and go, went abroad to study or invited black belts, Brazilian black belts, to come over and give seminars. Mm-hmm. It was difficult, but the habit of, I guess, the habit of acquiring more knowledge, yeah. more technical knowledge, uh, and uh, um, developing good habits. And training methodologies happened during our younger years as a team, even for me. Your so, original team was in Atos, Philippines, right? Your original team. My original team was different. Okay, was you, are different. you allowed to talk about like the, yeah, the, 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 the team that you put up? I'm not talking about the one you started with, the one you put up. Yeah, we uh, when we when we exited our team, uh-huh. um, our original team, we made our own. Uh-huh. So we didn't have any black belt. Actually, that's the time when we actually skyrocketed up. Uh, the team was called VPF. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was it stood for Vamos para Frente. It's mm-hmm. Portuguese for moving forward, taking the lead, and all that. Cool. And um, it's exactly that kind of mentality that allowed us to get better and actually seek out um, the best instruction and the best techniques out there. And that's why we ended up with Atos Philippines. So, Amazing. Yeah. All right. For th- for those of you who are tuning in right now, we have uh, Professor. Uh, Alexander Ali Sulit from Atos Philippines is also fine, Ali, Ali Sulit. Um, <laughs> he's the one of the coaches of the Philippine National Jiu Jitsu team. At the same time, the head of Atos Philippines, and of course, a uh, first degree Jiu Jitsu black belt and gold medalist. And we're talking about Jiu Jitsu, its function, and how it can change a person's life. Uh, if you guys are interested in joining our conversation, we'd like to invite you all. You could text or call us via VMO or Vi- IMO or Viber at zero nine two eight zero six nine 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 three eight. Or you can call us via Skype, via V81 Radio. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions about, um, how do I say, jujitsu and how you can get into it. Now, tonight's episode is brought to you by Crystal Age. And thanks to my dear friend, Xavier or Javier Cortez, <laughs> who just guested here uh, last week. Crystal Age Crystal Shop, it's, they have two locations, the one along Maginhawa and one on Magiting Street here in Quezon City, Philippines. They offer some of the nicest crystals that your money can buy here in the Philippines for those of you who are interested. So if you want to know more, visit their f- website or their Facebook page at Crystal Age and see some of the amazing crystals that they have to offer. I've been there, went to their shop right after the show last week. I was blown away by the quality of their crystals. So you guys got to check that out. So it's 7.56 on the clock. We're going to be back at 8 and uh, eight exactly right here on V81 Radio's Mysterium After Dark. Music all day long, streaming worldwide. The future of radio. Is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station? This is V81 Radio. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high quality, yet budget friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, copywriters, and graphic artists, we can help you build your podcast from planning, post production, and platform submission. Using only cutting edge software and studio equipment, we are here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send us an email at marketing at 
TransourceMedia.com or call us at 209-505-5693. Transource Media, transforming businesses through the power of multimedia. Pinoy Music ba ang hanap mo? Listen to V81 Radio anytime, anywhere. Now, you can download our official mobile apps for Android and iOS for free. For Android, i-download lang ang V81 Radio app on Google Play Store. For iOS, i-download lang at the App Store. Just type in V81 Radio. That's letter V, number 8, number 1, space, and the word radio. OPM hit 24 hours a day, anytime, anywhere. For desktop or laptop, you can also log in to www.v81radio.com. Kaya makinig na kami po ang V81 Radio All Hits All Pinoy Darating na ba si The One? Baka naman oras ng yumaman Pwede ring lumevel up ang inyong career Tara na't alamin ang inyong kapalaran sa dikta ng mga bituin Kasama ang eksperto sa usapang tadhana na si Madam Venus Madam Venus at your service Madam Venus at your service Tuwing Huwebes, alas 9 hanggang alas 11 ng gabi At Sabado, alas 6 hanggang alas 8 ng gabi Madam Venus at your service Madam Venus at your service Dito lang yan sa V81 Radio Heto na ang programa para sa inyo Para sa mga OFW Programong tutulong at tutugon sa inyong mga lungkot at problema. Para sa mga OFW. Programong mag-aalis ng homesick sa mga bayaning gaya ninyo. Para sa mga OFW. Sa iba't ibang dakuman ng mundo, maghahatid ng tuwa at saya sa bawat Pilipino. Para sa mga OFW. Maglilingkod para sa OFW. OFW Online. OFW Online. OFW Online. Mapapakinggan tuwing Martes at Merkules alas 7 ng gabi at tuwing Sabado at Linggo alas 3 ng hapon. Kasama si Cap Marvin. OFW Online. OFW Online. Kaya mga kababayan, tutut na. Dito lang yan sa V81 Radio. Mga ka-V81, muli tayong nakatanggap ng parangal at kinilala ang ilan sa mga programa natin sa nakaraang 32nd Global Excellence Awards na ginanap sa Baguio City. OFW Online with Cap Marvin and Baba Dolitz. Outstanding OFW Online Program. Madam Venus at your service. Outstanding Online Psychic Program. Muli din nakatanggap ng parangal ang ating mga paboritong V81 Radio DJs. Baba Dolitz, Outstanding Entertainment Host and Radio DJ. Madam Chica, Outstanding Internet Radio DJ. At si Cap Marvin, Outstanding Internet Radio DJ. Taon-taon tayo nagwawagi, panalo na naman tayo mga ka-V81. Patunay lamang ito ng aming buong pusong dedikasyon sa industriyang ito. Ang pagpapasaya sa inyo ang aming misyon. Ang makita kayong masaya at natutuwa sa amin ay sapat na upang kami ay magpatuloy. Maraming salamat po sa araw-araw na pakikinig, panonood at pagtangkilik sa amin. We are the future of radio. Kami po ang V81 Radio. All hits, all Pinoy. Naghahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya. Dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa Tiyak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa
exciting episode of Mysterium After Dark with my dear friend today, Professor Ali Sulit. But before we, of course, proceed, we'd like to thank our sponsors. This episode of Mysterium After Dark is brought to you by Crystal Age. Crystal Age Shop, it's located at um, 102 Maginhawa Street, Quezon City, beside Clean Slate. For those of you looking for quality crystals here in the Philippines, Crystal Age will get you covered, all right? If you want to know more about them, you can contact them at 0917-579-1991 or visit their Instagram page at crystal.age or visit their official website, www.crystalage.ph. So if you guys want to get some cool crystals, these are the dudes you want to talk to. Thank you very much, Professor Javier Cortez. And we're back. Professor Sulit, welcome back. Hello, hello. All right, so... Um, while we were during the, we were, uh, when we were discussing during the break, like about one of the aspects that most jujitsuers will have to undergo, which is the competitive aspect, and this is just an area that I have never and I don't think I will ever master because every time competition comes, I turn turn into a total sissy, as in I hate competitions, it makes my anxiety go through the roof. For those people out there who are either practicing jujitsu or thinking about it, how can you prepare for a competition? I mean, like, how would you prepare us for it? All right, uh, gee, it's uh, well, I can take you back yeah. uh, to how I started as a competitor. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, there's some people who are naturally competitive, mm -hmm. and some people just wanted to aspire to make something out of themselves yeah. and stuff like that. But um, throughout my years of competing personally yeah. Yeah. and training people and teams for competition, you know, there's some things I I can actually. Uh, tell you mm -hmm. off the bat that our general rules or observations mm -hmm. that are most likely to be true at, in any case. Mm -hmm. okay. Number one, nobody competes to lose. Mm. Okay, to say that you know I'm just gonna try it out, see how it feels like that for me is, is you know yeah you can do that. It's anybody's prerogative to do that. Mm -hmm. but it's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. If you just want to get your feet wet, go ahead. But if you're gonna, I, I'm sorry, I take competition seriously. Okay, because, you know, sure, I mean, if you win a gold medal, okay, unless it's in the Olympics, okay, but even, <laughs> but it, what does it say? It can uh, be symbolic of what? Your hard work. Yeah, hell okay, yeah. Or, or it, it, it's not necessarily the medal itself, uh -huh. okay? It's it's you as a person trying to overcome something or trying to prove something on how it works for you. Because we all have different motivations. We have different approaches and methodologies and to achieve whatever we want, Yeah. right? And uh, for most parts, it's actually trial and error. So for me to say that hey, I'm just gonna try it out, you know, and uh, bahala na, that doesn't work. I take competition competition seriously. Yeah. Okay. And I think you know if you're if you're if you're setting yourself yourself up to be a serious competitor, mm -hmm. especially in martial arts, man, you gotta take it seriously. For one thing, this is contact sports, man. Yeah. Uh, if you if you mess up there, you're gonna end up broken. So you gotta take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the secret. Okay. Other other people can probably support me other people say oh, no you can try it out you mm -hmm. know but this is my experience i'm talking about but how do you deal with the anxiety that comes with it because like, i never managed to figure that out even if i trained for it, it never goes away man it just it eats you, you up know, <laughs> you know that you know in avengers when yeah. the hulk said that's my secret cap you know i'm always angry <laughs> yeah you know, i guess it's here the secret is i'm always scared <laughs> <laughs> okay no no it's not um or you always just prepare to compete so it becomes normal. But please continue. Well, I try to think of it, you know, in a scientific way. You know, if I feel my knees are trembling yeah. and I'm shaking, you know, you think that's fear. But that I'll just take it like it's adrenaline, you know. It's adrenaline. Yeah, it's adrenaline coursing through your system. That's mm -hmm. it's, you're having to shakes. And you know what? Adrenaline is good. Adrenaline can be your friend, you know, in a time like that. It can also be your enemy. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously. But here's the thing, man. Uh -huh. I mean, why, why do we get anxious? Mm -hmm. Why do we get scared when we compete? Okay. And there are ways to deal with that it's through habit, uh, the true habits that you develop throughout mm -hmm. a good pep talk from your teammate or your coach. Okay, but uh, here's the thing: it's it's gonna be difficult to step on the mats. Yeah, whether it's competition or just training, if 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 you have if you can't control your fear, if you can't control your anxiety. Okay, and first you have to address what are the irrational fears. Okay, that you will have stepping onto those mats. Mm -hmm. Okay, one is the fear of losing. Yeah. Okay, so, and then the fear of getting hurt. Mm -hmm. It's basically like that. Okay, and uh, from those two, you can just uh, branch it out. Like from fear of losing, uh, you can. You, you, it's fear of letting your teammates down. It's fear of letting somebody down. It's fear of not winning that medal. Okay, it's fear of being humiliated. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. The, the fear of getting hurt is actually more real. But yeah. that's the thing. That's where you can actually apply courage because you run the risk of that happening. Okay. Um, how did I deal with it? Um, like I said, it's all trial and error. I started competing in martial arts when I was uh, 17, mm. back in college. Judo. In judo, yeah. And in judo, judo is actually less forgiving than jiu-jitsu. When really? It comes how come? Because we throw each other around, man. Okay. Especially when I started, I was a heavyweight. You know, I, I belonged in the biggest division. Uh, it had no cap, no ceiling, no weight cap. Mm-hmm. So I was actually the smallest heavyweight in the country at that time. Okay, but uh, yeah, so what do you do? Okay, uh, you know, I, I started being a real douche, you know, <laughs> a real jerk when mm-hmm. I competed because uh, I had so much bravado. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would try to intimidate my opponents and like try to look tough and try to look fierce and mean just to intimidate them. You know what? It worked. Yeah. It really worked because in judo, people are really afraid to get hurt. Yeah. Okay. But later on, you know, I, I uh, later on, I, I just realized that, you know, okay, that worked, but that's not really me. And it's not really t- teaching me anything. It doesn't go along with the values that I've, I, I, I would learn in martial arts throughout the years. Mm-hmm. So even that changed. Because I've observed that, like when people saw like, in competitive sports, even in MMA, mm-hmm. there are some guys, like example, like Anderson Silva or like Leona Machida, who are very honorable. Like there's yeah. no hard feelings, and there are others that they want to, like example, like Brock Lesnar, who wants to kill the guy in front of him. I mean, does that add any value, like having that rage yeah. towards your opponent? Or okay, personally, let me address the whole MMA thing. Okay? Uh-huh. MMA is not martial arts. Okay, it's a sporting spectacle. Uh huh. Okay, a lot of people like and see. I'm sorry, that's the sad thing about today. Most people think that that's martial arts now. Yeah. So martial arts, take it back. Take it back some 50 years back. Mm-hmm. Okay. When martial arts was still, still, is, wasn't just about the skills. Yeah. It was also about the discipline and the, the, the values that the honor. with it. Everything. Yeah. You know? uh, a lot of people and a lot of kids and even seniors and instructors now actually forgot that. I don't know where, where did it go? Yeah. Where did it go? Because if you acted honorably, then, you know, mixed martial arts would be boring. Yeah, I guess That's so. Way, it's it's different. You can't, you know, it serves its own purpose. Yeah. Okay, I'm not condemning it. It's 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 you know, it is what it is, and it's for a different thing. So I kind of separate uh, being a martial artist from uh, mixed martial arts. It's yeah. Different, okay. And even jujitsu in itself is a modern martial art. It's not actually one of the traditional ones. Mm. Okay. Things can get pretty casual in a jujitsu school, most jujitsu schools nowadays, especially. Um, but uh, me, I like to keep it old school, because that's the thing. I mean, in order for you to learn how to handle anxiety. You do it on the mats, mm-hmm. in the class, okay? When you become afraid of the coach's routines, it's gonna kill you. Yeah. When you become afraid of that dreaded guy and you know, when it's time to roll and you know, he looks at you, hey, come on, we're gonna roll. How do you deal with it? That's, that's the practice that, you, that, that, you, that you'll get in order to address these things, mm-hmm. okay? Um, of course, you asked the question, uh, how, do, how did I prepare before? Yeah. Uh, what did I learn? You know what? One of the things that worked best for me is the moment I realized that the moment you step on those mats, okay, accept the fact that you 50% of the time you can win, 50% of the time you can lose, okay? Don't think that losing is unacceptable, okay? Don't think that, you know, it, that the world's gonna shatter and end if you d- do not win the match, okay? Because that's gonna just, um, it will create more problems for you even after. But doesn't like a reverse can happen sometimes? That people get too used to losing that they like they roll, but they are not giving. They're holding back. Exactly. You know what I mean? How do you how do you crack people no, out of that? The, that's the thing. Like I said, you you have to be mature enough, uh-huh. and you have to accept the fact that you can lose, you can win, no matter how much you try to prepare for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. There's always the possibility. The luck factor. It's not luck, man. I mean, even the best competitors in the world, mm-hmm. they can even they can have a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> that's luck. Yeah. Don't you think? Well, <laughs> it's it's really like luck. the ten percent value. Where the hard work is there. You could be on point. I wouldn't want to call it luck. What would, would you call, call it? it? But uh, you know, it can happen. Yeah. It does, and it does happen a lot. Yeah. That's why there are upsets. One time you're winning, you're winning, and last possible moment, boom, somebody does something, and yeah. you're, you lose. It, it happens. So, you know, I don't, I don't really want to preach anymore why that happens, but it does happen. So, mm-hmm. because of that, okay, fifty percent of the time you can win, fifty you can lose. Mm-hmm. So. You just have to focus on what you can control. Yeah. Right? So I train my ass off for the 50% that I can win. Okay? Because what's going to happen if you don't train for it? Yeah. Okay, that 50% of winning becomes lesser. <laughs> yeah. That's, right? that's true, yeah. And the chances of you having a bad day during a comp will... Even bigger. Exactly. So you just have to do your part. Okay? And just probably hope to God that you don't have a bad day and that 
you can actually apply everything that you train for. So it's a mindset. Yeah. It, it is a mindset for me. Okay. And the moment I accept that there's a chance that I can lose and really accept it, mm -hmm. okay, then the fear of losing just fades away for me. Just basically accepting what you fear exactly. the most. Exactly. And then when the the, the fear of losing leaves me, mm -hmm. I can fully concentrate and focus on doing my thing because nothing's impeding me from Because remember how fear is so, it's so, um, it can, once it grasps you and takes a hold of you, it possess can, you. Exactly. It can make you just, it can just paralyze you. And that, that's it's a, a very paralyzing thing. That has some real world applications because I can imagine, let's say I'm, I'm too afraid to approach the girl I like, right? But then I learned to get, example, and I, I learned to get, <laughs> no, listen, but hear me out, hear me I, out I before. And, but then I learned to face the fear of challenging the biggest guy on the team and I'm not afraid of him anymore. Then I'm going to have that thing in the back of my head that like, wait a minute, I, I challenged the biggest guy. I wasn't afraid of him. So speaking to the girl I like, that should be nothing. Because if the girl doesn't like you, she's not going to like judo throw you. <laughs> Quote Matt Zhao, hello. <laughs> but, then, but then Matt, you ch challenge him, somebody huge, the biggest guy on the team, you're going to get tossed. Yeah. So I guess that there's a lot of practical things you can get from jiu-jitsu because especially with courage, if you exactly. can stand up on the mat, you can stand up anywhere in life. That's the thing. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people deal with fear. They, mm -hmm. they fear is such a common word that's yeah. been thrown around so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, but the words courage and bravery isn't mm -hmm. really thrown around as much. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. it's it's problematic for me and it's sad. Okay. When you when people have a problem and they're going to be facing something really bad in life, people mm -hmm. just say okay lang yan. They give you a pat on the back, but nobody ever tells you to be courageous. Yeah. Stand up. Nobody to it. ever tells you to be brave. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, that happens hardly. Makes so. me wonder. Like, have you ever had fighters or uh, yeah competitors just crack before their match? <laughs> yeah. I'll and then you, how do you how I'll do you do that? Story, uh -huh. okay? Here's a, that's why this is the power of fear uh -huh. and how it can really paralyze you. And actually, all those months of training can just disappear just like that, just yeah. because you, you overlooked that part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and for me, that's a big factor. Yeah. Okay. People who are not so used to competing okay, are still subject to this. There's, they, they, they fall victim to this. Okay. Different levels of fear okay, and different le levels of being paralyzed because of it. Okay. And even if you can feel you, you can move sometimes in the middle of the match you can have a brain fart or you know you can just stop right in the middle of it and you know just freeze mm. and not know what to do and then it'll cost you the match that's the power of fear man okay that's one of the first things you should uh, learn to conquer so is there like a certain minimum recommended hours that you spend on the mat to get over it or is it it's subjective from person to person like example if you could tell me right now all right robert uh, roll roll at least 60 hours a month minimum and you're not going to have that fear i mean or is it really just person to person no, it, it's not see that's the thing most people think you're not going to have that fear mm -hmm. no 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 you will always have that mm -hmm. okay you will always have that it's a matter of you learning how to deal with it okay that's the thing most people think they lo they lost it mm -hmm. and then next day it'll creep upon them yeah because you never lose it man that's the truth about it okay it's about um it's about uh, it's it's as common as you know you know you have to train yeah you have to go to class okay but there'll always be that part of you who's gonna be lazy mm -hmm. who's gonna be dragging your ass to training okay and what do you do you just have to fight it you it's know, always it's a constant I read it's in an article that when you're depressed you should actually train jujitsu more do yeah. you agree with this or disagree with this I, I agree totally uh, please move closer to the mic sir yeah so like uh, why I would that you. why why would you agree with that because like you think you're depressed you can barely move and then you're gonna go to the gym like this is just the logic some people would say i'm gonna get my ass kicked so why would you say that training jujitsu is better dealing with depression than just not what's your take um let's put it this way um what do you call this jujitsu is a positive force mm -hmm. i really believe that it can be a positive force for mm -hmm. the person and for society really okay so and if somebody's encountering depression and i'm not going to pretend that i'm an expert on dealing with um, mental illness and all that I even though i've had my fair share yeah throughout the years okay um one thing i do know if you're experiencing that and it depends on the gravity of it okay you have to surround yourself or um focus on positive things like what Okay. And for me, jiu-jitsu is just one of those positive things, and it's a very empowering thing. Okay, It teaches you how to accomplish things just by focusing. It can empower you by making you think, oh, okay, I'm studying a hard move, and I got to pull it off. And mm -hmm. that in itself is very empowering. 
you put yourself in a you're put in a very bad position a, a really awkward situation where you're being you know twisted folded up <laughs> yeah. like a pretzel yeah, yeah. and you just have to figure out how to get out of it it's uh -huh. and then you get to hone your problem solving skills yeah it's a challenge yeah okay and then you work yourself out you work your way out of it and then you succeed in doing so and man that does something for you that does something to our heads in our minds that you know you can actually get yourself out of it it's mm -hmm. in the dopamines are released mm -hmm. and you know and you feel good about yourself that's why it's such a positive force about depression i mean uh, i guess i read recently um jim carrey said something like uh he believes in depression it's legitimate but he believes that if you don't exercise, yeah. you don't eat nutritious food, get enough sunlight, get enough sleep, consume, uh, consume positive material, surround yourself with good support, then you're not really giving yourself a fighting chance against no, no, it. No, that's, that's very true. Right? That's very true. So, uh, jiu-jitsu literally gives you a fighting chance against it. Mm -hmm. Okay, And I've seen the power of jiu-jitsu and things like jiu-jitsu, productive things, positive things that allow the person to focus on the good things in life. Okay. It, uh, it might not cure it, but it gives them a fighting chance. Yeah, okay. it gives one, one day at a time. Exactly. Now, the thing is this, though. Um, of course, for those of you who would say, yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to take jujitsu, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to take up my first class, right? And then a lot of people after the first day get burned because it's like demand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I remember that. And then, but hey, I, I'm still semi there. I mean, I'm just on hiatus, but I really intend to go back. But the thing is, What's the, what can people expect? Like if our viewers are tuning in right now and they're saying, okay, we're going to enlist into Ali Sulit's army and we want to be trained. What are some expectations they can get tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I recognize, for, I recognize the, that everybody who, who steps in those doors, mm -hmm. they, they have different motivations. Mm -hmm. okay, whether it's just trying to get physically fit. Mm -hmm. okay, and I always tell them, yeah, this is like going to the gym, except it's not boring. <laughs> the workout is the same. Yeah. Okay. And you learn to, and you get to learn new skills yeah. with it. Okay. And others just want to feel like uh, they want to learn something new. Mm -hmm. they, re they really, they're really interested in martial arts mm -hmm. and that specific martial arts. So or, or check. That's another check. And there are others who want to be competitive. Yeah. Okay. And there's something in in them for something in it for them too. So it's another check. So whatever it is, um, if if it's a good school, if it's a good class. It has good instructors who are mindful of the needs of each student that goes in. Mm -hmm. Then you won't have a problem. Yeah. Because I know it doesn't work that way for everyone. Yeah. Okay. I I I've heard of stories where people just step in, and the moment they step in, they get bullied imme immediately. Yeah, okay. That and uh, I can imagine how that happens. Mm -hmm. You know. And you know, the moment a new guy steps in, the existing people would consider that guy fresh meat. You know. Mm -hmm. And they just wanted to prove they want to prove themselves or assert themselves over mm -hmm. the new guy. None of that. None of that. Where I am from. Um, okay. Would you consider jujitsu something better to learn as a group with people? Like I come in with my siblings, or it's like an in independent thing. What would your take be on that? Uh, it depends on your motivation. Okay, mm -hmm. um, me, I'm a, you know, when it comes to these things, I personally, though it's it kind of got buried a long time mm -hmm. ago. But if it was me, I'd, I'd rather do it alone. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like when I go to the gym. I really don't like going to commercial gyms where everybody's just you know busy taking hogging selfies. the materials <laughs> and <laughs> taking selfies and videos of themselves working out and looking at uh -huh. the mirror. I'd rather work out alone. Yeah. Okay. But I've also observed that when people get to do this with uh, with friends and family, they stick more to it. Mm. They actually enjoy it and they actually help each other out more. The support group. Yeah. And uh, we've got like generational trainers. Like we've got people who like bring their children. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing like we don't have is grandchildren, right? In, in my Instagram, I always <laughs> yeah. if there's a if there are families that yeah. train together. Yeah. You know, I I take my usual jujitsu family values yeah. uh, picture. I yeah. like um like for example. Uh, I have uh, Paki, Paki Barika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He trains with three of his kids now. Wow. Okay. Um, sometimes they all train together. They're all in their uniforms to take a picture of yeah. them. Okay. One of our um, seniors uh, from our Fisher Mall branch and uh, an instructor for our kids' class, Marlo. His wife trains and his two kids trains and Jiu Jitsu family values, man. And I think it's a precious thing. I mean, before, uh, me and my brother. See, this, this is one of the things from my history that uh, a lot of people don't know. Uh, Atenea Judo School was left to me and my brother because wow. our sensei had to leave. Okay, And uh, it was left to us. We were brown belts. Okay? We didn't have any black belt then. you know, And we wanted to make sure that you know uh, Judo and Atene wouldn't go down. So yeah. what my brother and I would do, we studied our material, just the two of us. And uh, we would lock ourselves in that dojo for three hours every Saturday. And we just study technique and beat each other up you know, for... For a long time, well, yeah. we were growing up in our teenage years, you know, and that's, you know, that's training as a family. 
But I wanted to ask you though, what's the role that diet plays in being a DJ? <laughs> I, mean, I really, because some people think that they can just train, but you know what? It's funny that the the food you eat will allow, will either expedite or slow down uh, your recovery process. Let's keep it simple: garbage in, garbage out. Okay. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um, depends on what your goals are. Yeah. If you just want to maintain, be vibrant, be healthy, or if you wanna, if you if you're looking after weight cut, it's different because mm -hmm. if you're competitive, it's usually. Um, trying to reach a specific weight yeah so like how does that work in jiu-jitsu like example um there's really an abs it's like the ufc there's an absolute number you got to meet before you compete or what do you mean in other words uh, like if you're in one class let's say like middleweight you have a maximum and if you go beyond that you're disqualified is that how it works this uh, is just for the viewers i know how it works but then yeah um in competition let's say you registered for a certain weight yeah position. Okay, and it depends on the rules of the organization hosting uh -huh. the event. If you can weigh in with or without the uniform, because okay. the uniform itself can weigh as much as three kilos on yeah. the average. Yeah, that's that's pretty heavy. That's pretty <laughs> heavy. So if you're gonna weigh in without your uniform, you have to have an allowance of three kilos when you step on the yeah. scale. Okay, but uh, that's the thing. If you registered under this division, this division, and with the with the uniform or whatever, and you make the weight, then you're good to go. Yeah, and you you're weighed in like a, a few minutes or. A few minutes or probably an hour before your actual match. Whoa! So yeah, you do have people to, actually you have try to, to wait cut it to the last minute? Yeah, they do, man. I've seen it happen. It, it's isn't that dangerous though? It is, and for me, it's not good practice. However, it's a lot of people do it because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it happens. They should ideally, as a coach, as an athletic coach, it shouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be in wait like some three months two to three months even before the actual definitely, event to, definitely. Ma to achieve maximum uh, and optimum performance yeah because some people cut the weight but their performance crashes afterwards. exactly because yeah, you expend all the energy you're supposed to have you're supposed to be storing your energy reserves mm -hmm. just before your your competition day. yeah and then if you just if you keep depleting it just by cutting weight man i tell you just the fatigue of that it gets to your head you're thinking slow and then you gotta fight slower. still too and that, that happens. I experienced that myself. Okay. Okay. And I tell you, that wasn't a pleasant experience. I was able to pull it off, but man, that was one of the most difficult competitions. But the me. heavyweight division has no weight limit, right? Yeah, but I wasn't. <laughs> I'm not a heavyweight anymore. <laughs> I, in jiu-jitsu, I'm, I'm middle heavy. So. Okay. So, but like the heavyweight division, that, that's a different monster in itself because you think, oh yeah, you could be whatever weight you want. But then I enjoyed you, that in judo. Yeah, really. In my, comp in my competitive years in judo, uh, right after college and mm -hmm. a few years after that, I was a heavyweight. I was the smallest heavyweight. But that that gave me my advantage. Mm -hmm. I mean, all all I was what I was a hundred kilos. I actually was, I only weighed ninety five. Mm -hmm. But the heavyweight division was a hundred kilos. So I would eat uh, buf my breakfast buffet, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't go to the bathroom yet, <laughs> so I can make weight. Because if you're underweight, you also get disqualified. Really? Yeah. So I would I would like make weight, uh -huh. like uh, just really stuff myself in the morning before stepping on the scale. I'd be the smallest heavyweight. I'm five eleven, mm -hmm. and like just, like ninety ninety eight kilos. And uh, my opponents would be like six two, six three, and they're like three hundred pounds. Yeah, but that's that's a, that's another factor. That, like okay. especially in the heavyweight and the absolute divisions, there's no there's no weight limit to your potential opponent. So like literally, the big show can put on a gi and just yeah. say I'm here. But then, exactly. I mean, how do you if like if you had a student, how do you prepare them for that uncertainty? Sheer will. Oh, no, sheer will. <laughs> really say, hey, it's the big show. No, no, that's, uh, <laughs> It's a um, strategy, man. I mean, you have to form strategies. Uh -huh. It would help if you know how the opponent uh, com plays, mm -hmm. what their moves are. Have you ever had that? Or you had to fight some Goliath-sized guy? Yeah. And, yeah, and then what did. do you do? Probably the heaviest I've competed with was 310 pounds. Holy crap. What yeah. did you do? Um, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, that's that the a, thing. That was an international event. Uh -huh. but, and I also, I, but I won against a 300-pounder also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's strategy. It's really strategy, man. I mean... I always tell my students in between technique is strategy mm -hmm. on how to use them. I mean, if if a guy in, in judo, it's different for me because, like I said, they can be bigger than me, but I'll yeah, always. How do you I'll toss somebody that's like so much bigger than well, you? I'm smaller than them. I move much faster. Okay. So that worked for my advantage. Okay, and then sheer will. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna get somebody killed one of these days. Anyhow, you and, guys. Uh, <laughs> in jiu jitsu, it's uh, it's, re it's really strategy. Uh huh. I mean, if you're especially. One of our favorite positions is getting the back. Yeah. And that's really an effective strategy against somebody who's a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because their size really wouldn't matter if you're, you know, jumping on their back like a monkey. Yeah. They really can't reach you. So it's a good strategy to have. But what moves can you do and what positions should you have 
against the bigger guy who can smash you and still be able to go around and get their back. See, that, that's that's where you develop a game plan. But a game plan is only as good as your skills. Mm-hmm. If you can't pull off the moves that the game plan demands of you, then that's for nothing. Damn, that's, that's what you train. You train yeah. for it. You address every possible situation, okay, and you acquire as many possible skills that you can have, okay, to make everything possible for you. Because if you lack certain skill sets, if you lack uh, certain expertise in a specific position or a situation, then that's not going to help you. That's why we keep on studying. That's why jujitsu is so um, drill been, drill oriented. Uh, that's why it. It's it's uh, it continues. It, I mean, there's really you won't run out of things to do. You won't run out of things to learn mm-hmm. because there's always something you can improve at. And even yeah. the things that you think you've mastered already, yeah, just because there's it, new ways of looking are, at exactly, it. Exactly, there are new ways of uh, doing it, and you even just a new way of looking at it. Okay, especially me as an instructor, mm-hmm. I find myself recycling my lessons. But every time I recycle to my original lesson, I find that. There's an additional detail that, that I you missed add. out on, yeah. No, that I didn't miss out on. Mm-hmm. It's not about missing out. It's about being able to do it better. That's amazing. Okay? So the way I teach this specific move now as compared to how I taught it some three years back is a lot different. Oh, cool. Okay. So anyhow, we're going to take our next break. This episode of Mysterium After Dark is brought to you by Crystal Age. Visit them at Magiting Street or at their branch in Maginhawa. You can contact them at 917 579 991, uh, probably one of the most amazing crystal shops in the Philippines. I've checked them out. Thank you very much, Professor Xavier, for the gifts you've given us. Crystal Age Crystal Shop, two branches, Maginhawa and Magiting Street, Quezon City. They have a wonderful selection, and they can gladly help you understand which crystals can best suit your needs. So that's Crystal Age Crystal Shop, also on Instagram, at crystal.h. Um, a- a- dot age. So also visit their website, www.crystalage.ph. So, Professor Xavier, thank you very much. We're going to take a five-minute break and see you in, in a bit. <laughs> Music all day long, streaming worldwide. Radio. The future of radio. Is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station? This is V81 Radio. Transource Media is dedicated to provide reliable, affordable, fast, and efficient services to our clients. We offer services that have been strategically organized to produce high-quality results. We are focused on providing essential assistance such as, but not limited to transcription services, virtual assistance, web designing, audio, video, post-production, and voiceovers. Transource Media, your most reliable partner for all your business needs. For more information, visit transsourcemedia.com. Pinoy Music ba ang hanap mo? Dito na kayo! Your source of pure OPM hits online. Mula umaga hanggang gabi, 24 hours a day, ang mga paborito niyong Pinoy pop, rock, classics, love songs ay mapapakinggan kahit saan ka man. Gamit ang aming mobile app, website, at Facebook Live. Samahan mo pa ng Billboard Hits, Rewind Songs, Christian Music, and Fun Talk Programs during weekends. O saan ka pa? Kami po ang V81 Radio. All Hits, All Pinoy. Connected ka na ba? Follow us on our social media accounts. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hanapin lang ang V81 Radio. That's letter V81 space radio. At maging updated all day, every day. Kami po ang inyong All Hits, All Pinoy internet radio station. V81 Radio. All Hits, All Pinoy. Gusto mo ba na lagi kang protektado? HD CCTV camera ba ang hanap mo? Panikuradong 3K security services ang para sa'yo. Authorized wholesaler of HIK Vision. 3K SS. 3K security solutions. Tawagan sila sa 046-970-6315 or 0929-343-1636. At para sa mga kababayan natin abroad, magtanong at i-email sila sa 3kssstrading at gmail.com. OTK hanapin ang kanilang 
Facebook page at facebook.com slash 3KSS Trading. 3KSS, 3K Security Solutions, 3K Security Solutions, matatagpuan sa number 306, Aguinaldo Highway, Panapaan 7, Bacoor, Cavite, Philippines. Tunog Pinoy, Tatap Pinoy, streaming worldwide, the future of radio. This is your All Hits All Pinoy Internet Radio Station. This is the 81 Radio. are back <laughs> we weren't expecting that one but then again yeah we are back for yet another interesting segment tonight about fitness and brazilian jiu-jitsu brought to you by my friend jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu. <laughs> uh, professor ali sulit and of course this episode is brought to you by crystal age crystal shop here in Quezon city on long maginhawa and magiting street visit them on crystal uh, on instagram at crystal dot age age sorry age all right so um Okay, here's one thing I want to ask you. From all the competitions you've ever been in, what has been the most memorable you've ever had? I mean, like, your dream match so far. Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, the works. Oh. Uh, memorable? Yeah, it's like, wow. I mean, like, well, it's there, like your there, Apollo there, Creed. There, there are quite a few. Um, mm-hmm. Judo, there are some three competitions that I can think of. Mm-hmm. One is... Uh, one is... Um, hmm when I dislocated my shoulder right in the wow. middle of a match mm-hmm. and I just popped it in myself. Ouch! Right in the middle of it and I still ended up winning that match. It's like, uh, yeah, that was something that was intense. And you still won. Yeah, that was that was tough though. Jeez, and, um, you're a beast, man. <laughs> what else? What about um, jiu-jitsu? What can you say would be like your, your, uh, your creme de la creme of your competitions? Gee, I don't know. Um, in jiu-jitsu, to be honest, man, um, if I can share, yeah, yeah, I'll be honest. It's not the the ones that I won that were memorable for me. Okay. My, bus, my best friend from Bacolod is asking a question, and he's sure. actually asking. Question, if you are the size of a very tiny guy, and you're rolling against the size of somebody who's like as big as the big show, how can you manage in jiu-jitsu? I've seen that happen so many times. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> 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 happens to me that's, all the that's, time. That's, that's, for me, that's one of the more entertaining yeah. parts of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Okay? Especially we've got people from, you know, even even in our team. You yeah. Know, we got the big guys who are actually more terrified of the smaller guys yeah, yeah, than, yeah. The, than, their, than their weight class uh, uh, teammates. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, happens a lot. Got a lot of people from abroad, you know, people who don't really realize that Jiu Jitsu's been in the Philippines for so long, mm-hmm. and then they carry themselves like they're the man here. Yeah, and, they, they visit, and everybody's welcome, mm-hmm. and we don't make it a point to embarrass anybody or anything like that. But it just happened so many times that they, it's it's hard not to notice and talk about it, mm-hmm. you know, and you know they they like uh, <laughs> get torn in half. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I t- just, just to be fair, I'd, I'd like really, you know, just like throw my smallest guys at them, mm-hmm. and they end up getting really clobbered and, <laughs> and then humbled you know, for lack humbled. of a better. Yeah, and uh, yeah, a couple so, of times, you know, some a couple of those guys just walked out in the middle of the, the row training. And said, you know, I, I, I need to go somewhere and just, just <laughs> left. This <laughs> Their they ego can't yeah, take they it. They couldn't yeah. handle it. And see, for me, that's those are stories that can really happen in jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Some people. The internet and a lot of people, blow, you know, blow it up so much that I just, just this is jujitsu. This mm-hmm. is what we can do for you. And I, it's funny for me, but I, I really don't dwell on it. It's really not a big deal. It's just one of those things that uh, that you can see regularly in jujitsu. It can happen. It does happen a lot. How about like with the new uh, jujitsu federation in the Philippines? I mean, does this stuff happen? I mean, like, because this is relatively new. The new jet, the new federation, the um, that yeah. you that you're part of right now. You're training them, preparing them for some really big competitions. Um, is it is the spirit of it the same, or is this yeah. us trying to make it something more mainstream? Actually, what I like, what I'm really celebrating about uh, mm-hmm. the the new Jiu Jitsu Federation of the Philippines, is the fact that uh, most 
not all, but most of the big jiu-jitsu academies mm-hmm. in the Philippines actually got together and agreed that, hey, we'll do this together. Okay, really? We'll train together, we'll come up with the best team, and uh, we'll work together to make sure that the country is well represented in this wonderful sport, okay, mm-hmm. in the biggest and most prestigious competitions in the world. Okay, mm-hmm. and already we've been making waves ever since we started. Yeah. I was one of the first few before I got to be coach. I was part of the team. You were okay, and we had a good showing then in Hanoi in Vietnam back in 2006, 2016. Okay, mm-hmm. in fact, we actually that's that was I think that was very crucial because we kind of made a name and an image for ourselves then, mm-hmm. and since then everybody got to be so weary about the. Philippine contingent. Yes, they knew exactly who to look out for. Okay, and they 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 realized that they got to prepare for us. Okay, and then the following years, you know, we kept fielding world champions and stuff like that. And man, it's just been great. And what I like about it is, like I mentioned earlier, it's a team effort. It really is a team mm-hmm. team effort in jujitsu. Because if you you know the way jujitsu flourished in the country, everything everybody was tribal. Yeah, that's that's that was how it naturally flourished. Mm-hmm. Everybody was tribal. Everybody was cliquish. But that's normal. That's that's natural. Some people took it to a different level, but some people just um, just took it as you know, it's friendly competition, which w- is fine. Which reminds okay. me, um, Atos Philippines has prov- has pretty much established a very powerful women's contingent as well. I mean, like you think that jujitsu is all for men, but then oh, women yeah. like actually said, have been jiu-jitsu really is for everybody. Yeah, women it have is. been really rocking it. Like Maggie, Maggie, Maggie Ochoa. Ochoa is I mean. One of our country's best and brightest. Yes, and yeah. that's that's the thing. It's like some some people would think, oh, not just for men. No, I mean, nope, women nope, can nope. do it too. So, like for the ladies out there, what's your selling? It's for group? everybody, man. Uh-huh. I tell you, especially nowadays, today's world is crazy. Mm-hmm. Women who know how to do self defense and who can fight, man, that's a great thing. That's very sexy. Okay? I have two, <laughs> I have two daughters. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I want to make sure that they know how to uh, defend themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, my youngest daughter is here. Hi, Annika. Hello, Annika. Here, why don't you say hi? No, she let <laughs> come on. The show's about you. But the thing about it is just and like, the, for what about for the ladies out there? What are some of the, aside from the weight loss and well, like, what are some of the major benefits that they could expect if they're going to take up jujitsu? Okay, here's the one thing I like about jujitsu. It is mm-hmm. a safe haven for everybody. Really? Okay. Imagine, okay, a woman being able to grapple or and roll around the ground with mm-hmm. a guy and it's okay. Yeah. Most people, most girls would think, or most people think that's not appropriate. Okay. They're groping each other and but you know what? That's the thing. That's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. We, have, we have none of that. Okay? It's a safe place. Okay? Every, m- at least I'd like to think that almost uh, all practitioners, if not all, understand that when you're with people, whether you're only with a fellow guy or a girl or somebody younger than you or somebody smaller than you, okay, there are things that you can do and shouldn't do. And if you're going to do it, do it properly. Do it carefully. Mm-hmm. There's some consideration. There's some restraint. Yes. See? So that's how every. That's why everybody gets to enjoy it. There's something in it for everybody. Mm-hmm. And it, this, is, uh, this is not a well-known fact. Okay? But here, I'm going to say it for the first time live on your show. Okay? I'm actually happy and proud that uh, in, in our team, we're the first to have the first... We're the first to feel the transgender wow. athlete. Okay, and I'm very Amazing. proud of that fact. Really, it's very progressive. Um, our our teammate from Kagen de Oro, okay, she competed in the men's division. She did not compete in the women's division. Yeah, she's born male. Okay, she had uh, work done. Okay, and um, that's the thing. Um, she has to wear a rash guard. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> yeah, work can, done. Yeah, of course. Uh-huh. But uh, it, you know, it's funny because because of that, you know, the rules of that event change. You know, yeah. since one guy was allowed to wear a rash guard, everybody was allowed to wear a rash guard. Okay. Right? But that's the thing. You know, there's something in it for everybody, and everybody can enjoy it free of discrimination. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, it's an open thing. It's it's it uh, it fosters acceptance and respect. Okay, and I'm actually very proud of that fact. Okay, so yeah. I like one question I'm gonna ask you. There are a lot of people out there who um, they kind of mix up, they kind of mix up competencies. Like, so well, I'm already a judo black belt. I don't think I'll need a jujitsu purple belt or blue black belt. Is that true or false? Until they face a jujitsu <laughs> blue belt or white belt, that's gonna you know you know convince them otherwise. Same okay. thing with like wrestling. Like, uh, there's, I'm a catch wrestler, so maybe I'm already. Sometimes they think I should at least be a brown belt. There, I mean, doesn't the, the, the uh, is there a different. transition system? It's different, but. See that's the thing. Eh? That's the one thing about uh, about true martial artists. Okay, true martial artists would respect the discipline. Okay, the same way they would want people to respect their discipline. Yeah, of course. Diba? So if you understand that, it shouldn't be a problem. If you co- go in there with your ego, mm-hmm. you know, 
right there printed on your shirt yeah and you want to be treated like you're somebody already instead of trying to prove things first or but that's the thing you don't even have to prove it you just have to go there and learn okay um i started jujitsu i know judo i started jujitsu when i I was already a third degree black belt. Was that difficult judo. for you to go back to white belt? Was no. It, not at all. No, not at all. Because I understood it. I mm-hmm. understood how that worked. When mm-hmm. I was, ar- I joined jujitsu and I was already a third degree black belt in judo. Okay. And I was actually, I, personally, I was really delighted to put on a white belt again. Really? Because, you know, it's a different when, when you're an instructor. Would you compete okay. though in the white belt division or d- there's like the rules for that Depends though, right? On the organization. So like example, the Depends. nationals here, I know that okay. if you're a black belt in judo, you're at least competing at the blue belt level. Isn't that true? Uh, depends on the organization. Okay. okay. Some jiu-jitsu organizations, uh, if you're a judo black belt, you have to compete as a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, you know, I was just delighted to wear a white belt again because, it, you know, being a white belt again, you don't have to have the responsibilities <laughs> yeah. of being yeah. a senior or yes. being an instructor. Yes, that's very so true. So, I actually enjoyed my white belt, uh, my white belt days. Months. Yeah. <laughs> months. <laughs> uh, in jiu- no, because I still hold the record, I think, for uh, fastest promotion to blue belt. But I did six, work my ass off. That for was that. six months, right? I, I got my blue belt in six months. Wow. That was, uh, but I worked my ass off, man. The first two months, I just uh-huh. kept doing my own judo thing. I kept winning and submitting even purple belts. After the second month, I realized, man, I'm paying money for this and I didn't learn anything. Mm-hmm. And that's my fault because I didn't want to be submitted. I wanted to prove that I, I'm good. And that was my ego. Yeah. And that was ridiculous. I realized, you know, that's got to stop. Okay, and I decided to learn how to play guard. Yeah. I decided to, and everybody, even the smallest guys, they were passing me, they were getting my back, they were submitting me. Mm-hmm. It was a hell of three, you know, the next three months was hell. Because you went away from a core competency, you decided yeah. to, to grow. I opened myself to learning new uh-huh. things. And you know, I went through the whole process, man. I sucked so much, but I learned so much, it was much, much more in your turn. So until then, uh, on my sixth month, I was ready and I actually understood how it worked and, and you know, I learned it. All so. right, so this show is being watched all around the world from Filipinas all around the world. Now, here's Yellow one. Yeah, world. yeah, it's around the world. OFWs, and I'm sure that one or two people who's going to watch this is going to want to join a jiu-jitsu team somewhere else in the Philippines. So I'd like to ask you, what are some things they need to watch out for that they're joining a more, you don't need to drop any names, but like some red flags, you know what I mean? For Or some green flags, like green flags saying that the, the team is, you know, working while or like hey watch out for this you know at least for our, our viewers can be a bit more more you in, have to be informed. comfortable comfortable people yeah. you have to be comfortable um but that's the thing okay this is martial arts still okay um a good martial arts school will impose that you follow protocol mm-hmm. okay like showing up on time okay and if if they call you out for showing up late don't take it against them that's your fault mm-hmm. okay but if you can't help it just you know enter the dojo uh, greet the instructor properly, shake their hand, or bow in. It depends on the rules of the dojo or the school. Okay, they they can insist on these protocols. However, it's a little bit different. Actually, it's a lot different when they impose that you have a certain attitude about training or about you know if they foster a certain kind of culture that just makes you want to be you know tough or dominant over the other person. Uh, it's up to you. Depends on your motivation. But like I said, it has to s- go around and focus on learning. Mm-hmm. Okay. And in the process of that learning, the guidelines and basically the paradigm and the structures that's going to allow you to to build those skills should be built on certain core values. Okay. I mean, a lot of people say honor. Mm-hmm. You got to be brave. You got to be disciplined. Okay. Those are good things. That, those are indicators that you're, you belong to a, a good martial arts school. Okay. Of course, it it can't exist alone in the in that in that realm. It can't be just core values. Also, has to be uh, there's has to be competency, the skills. Yes. Okay, because it's it's great to be a nice martial artist as a person, but if your skills suck, <laughs> exactly. it's of no good. So it has there has to be a balance. Okay, there has to be a balance. For me personally, personally, um, when it comes to the core values that a martial arts mm-hmm. martial art can teach or a martial arts school or instructor can teach. Okay, there's always one thing that people miss out. Okay, and me, whenever I get the chance to share it, okay, like now I'm gonna share it. Um, you can learn how to be brave in any martial arts school. Just being able to face a bigger guy or a tougher guy than you, and you subject yourself to that, even if you, even though you get crushed, that's practicing courage. You get to practice it, and practice leads to habit. And uh, developing good habits is good. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
But uh, and there's also discipline. Mm -hmm. Okay, showing up on time, showing up all the time, showing up uh, the, for the, for competition training, everything there. Okay, perseverance, all those things. You know, you encounter these uh, these words. You know, we throw them around so much. Okay, but you seldom hear the value of compassion mm. in martial arts. You seldom hear that. Okay, but for me, that's the thing that makes sense. For if you mix it all up, that's the thing. That's the underlying thing that's going to put sense into all of that. Mm -hmm. And how do you get to practice that? But remember, it's like you're a martial artist, but you're not supposed to use it for a fight. Right? Yeah. Because that would basically violate, violate it, yeah. your, your, your sense, your, your, the, the code. If you do practice that. Because if you don't practice that, if you're just there for the skills, then no one's going to take it against you. But that's who, that's who you are. I guess that really depends eh? who you are. Who are you? What kind of martial, martial artist are you? What kind of athlete are you? Okay. If you practice compassion, okay, you can practice it there, just in class. Okay. I have a like chance control, to control, right, right? For example, I have a chance to crack this guy's arm. Okay. I know he's not gonna tap, but if I crack it and you know, even if he gets injured, okay, it's justified because he didn't tap out. Okay, that's fine. But if you practice compassion, you know that oh man, if I if I accidentally pop this guy's arm even though he's really not tapping to it. I know he's gonna have a difficult time going to his work tomorrow. I know yeah. he's gonna have a difficult time carrying his new baby. Okay, mm -hmm. see that that thing goes in your head. Okay, and that's those are the little things that teach you how to use compassion in those little instances that can translate on how you're gonna be as a person when you step off the mats. You get what I mean? Yeah, I get it. I get see, it. So it's, like, it's, it teaches you control too, exactly, and responsibility for restraint. the power that you have. See? Yeah, it, it, it definitely allows you. It, it it teaches you how to apply restraint, mm -hmm. and then, like I said. It's all boils down to that value of compassion. Okay, so it's not about being a badass. It's not about being the toughest guy in the room. It's about being the best martial artist, the most skilled. Okay, and yet learning how to use your strength, learning to look what's going to happen after that. Okay, and when you bring yourself out there, you know, you can just shut up about being a good martial artist. Okay, and still be a great person. And you know, you know your skills. You know what you can do. You don't have to shout it out to the world. Yeah, it right? gives you a level of self-confidence. Exactly. But the confidence that you get doing all these things, is you're going to carry that with you. Yeah. Okay? It's, yeah. Like, another thing people are saying that jiu-jitsu is really, really good for nowadays is anti-bullying. That's <laughs> something I wanted to touch before we wrapped up tonight. But we still have a bit of time. But, like, um, we're going to save that for the next segment after 9 o'clock. But then um, what I wanted to ask you is this. Some people are asking me on the on my, the SMS number is is jujitsu a good entry point towards MMA? Because I assume a lot of guys watch the UFC and they think they can do it. Is this the most um, how do I say recommended entry point? Or what what's your take on that? I mean, I don't I know you're not an MMA fighter to my knowledge, but then like you've worked with a lot of them. So what's your yeah, take? The answer is yes, uh -huh. of course. Uh, like I said earlier, it's really almost impossible to. Uh, dive into mixed martial arts without having not just basic jiu-jitsu skills but you got to have really good jiu-jitsu skills mm -hmm. otherwise you leave your uh, you leave a very important aspect of the game unchecked mm -hmm. okay um but it's a mix you know i mean you have to have a grappling art and a striking art at the same time mm -hmm. you know it's very common to see martial uh, mixed martial artists combine muay thai with jiu-jitsu yeah okay or boxing with wrestling okay so or kickboxing so it's there's got to be a good mix of it you have to have your striking arts and you have to have your grappling art some people you, instead of jiu-jitsu they use sambo mm -hmm. okay some people what is sambo judo. for the viewers for the viewers uh, sambo is a derivative of judo okay mm -hmm. um developed by the russian military uh it's almost exactly <laughs> like judo military. except they don't have chokes they don't have triangulations uh -huh. and instead they have leg locks wow. combined with their arm locks or any joint lock basically so and then the the throwing involved and stuff like that Wow, you, have you ever trained in sambo ever or? No. Okay. Yeah. Judo. So <laughs> it's like it's I, I know this is the way I see sambo fighters. They're like they're wearing the top gi, but they're wearing shorts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you think it's cold in Russia? And, and they have wrestling shoes on. <laughs> uh, Ed wrestling shoes. It's like <laughs> kind of like well, what is he doing? <laughs> Now, now, it is 8.53 on the clock. We're going to take a seven-minute break right now. We are on the air live with Professor Ali Sulit, uh, head of Atos Philippines, one of my dearest friends. Once again, this episode of Mysterium After Dark is brought to you by Crystal Age. Thank you, Professor Javier, for uh, all the support you've given us. Crystal Age is located at their branches in Maginhawa and Magiting Street here in Quezon City for some top-quality crystals. Visit Crystal Age. All right, Harry, take it away.
annoying music all day long. Streaming worldwide. The future of radio. your all hits all pinoy internet radio station this is v81 radio pinoy music bang hanap mo listen to v81 radio anytime anywhere now you can download our official mobile apps for android and ios for free for android it download lang ang v81 radio app on google play store for ios it download lang at the app store just type in v81 radio that's letter v number eight number one space and the word radio opm hit 24 hours a day anytime anywhere. For desktop or laptop, you can also log in to www.v81radio.com. Kaya makinig na. Kami po ang V81 Radio. All hits, all Pinoy. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for fast, high-quality, yet budget-friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, copywriters, and graphic artists, we can help you build your podcast from planning, post-production, and platform submission. Using only cutting-edge software and studio equipment, we are here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send us an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call us at 209-505-5693 Transource Media Transforming businesses through the power of multimedia Ito na ang programa para sa inyo Para sa mga OFW Programong tutulong at tutugon sa inyong mga lungkot at problema Para sa mga OFW Programong mag-aalis ng homesick sa mga bayaning gaya ninyo Para sa mga OFW sa iba't ibang dakuman ng mundo, maghahatid ng tuwa at saya sa bawat Pilipino. Para sa mga OFW. Maglilingkod para sa OFW. OFW Online. OFW Online. OFW Online. Mapapakinggan tuwing Martes at Merkules alas 7 ng gabi at tuwing Sabado at Linggo alas 3 ng hapon. Kasama si Cap Marvin. OFW Online. OFW Online. Kaya mga kababayan, tutok na. Dito lang yan sa V8. Radio. Mga ka-V81, muli tayong nakatanggap ng parangal at kinilala ang ilan sa mga programa natin sa nakaraang 32nd Global Excellence Awards na ginanap sa Baguio City. OFW Online with Cap Marvin and Baba Dolitz. Outstanding OFW Online Program. Madam Venus at your service. Outstanding Online Psychic Program. Muli din nakatanggap ng parangal ang ating mga paboritong V81 Radio DJs. Baba Dolitz, Outstanding Entertainment Host and Radio DJ. Madam Chica, Outstanding Internet Radio DJ. At si Cap Marvin, Outstanding Internet Radio DJ. Taon-taon tayo nagwawagi, panalo na naman tayo mga ka-V81. Patunay lamang ito ng aming buong pusong dedikasyon sa industriyang ito. Ang pagpapasaya sa inyo ang aming misyon. Ang makita kayong masaya at natutuwa sa amin ay sapat na upang kami ay magpatuloy. Maraming salamat po sa araw-araw na pakikinig, panonood at pagtangkilik sa amin. We are the future of radio. Kami po ang V81 Radio. All hits, all Pinoy. Nagahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya. Dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa Yak ito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa
last half hour stretch of Mysterium After Dark. And tonight, I am honored to have one of my best friends, my mentor, my brother in jiu-jitsu, Professor Ali Sulit with us here. Good evening, Professor Sulit. Good evening, everyone. Yes, and then before we go to the last segment of the show, I usually allow my clients to ask me one question. I will use the tarot cards and give a reading live on air about anything he wants. <laughs> Professor Sulit, anything that you want to ask? On air? Yeah, on air, anything. Yeah, gotta be <laughs> public. Uh, jeez. Yeah, I don't know. The most common ones are career and love life. Career and love life. Jeez. <laughs> Let's just do a forecast of what's going to happen to Professor Sula in the next couple of months, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Do the Wheel of Fortune, thing. actually, luck is about to change for you. So if things have been crappy, things are going to get better. But if things have been great, they're going to become crappy. I'll draw another card for you to, for you to watch out for. A lot of options are going to come your way. But what you're going to need to do is realize that they are options, not obligations. Hence, you may say no to them. Okay. Last but definitely not least, nine of coins reversed. From a kind of financial hard point, you're going to be in a better place. Oh. So at least more money's coming your way. So I'm happy to tell you that, Professor yes Sulit. Yeah. You. Anyhow, Thank you. so we were talking earlier about that for the last half, half hour stretch that there's a very strong uh, anti-bullying aspect of jiu-jitsu, yeah. and that's pretty popular. You want to share with us about that? Well, it's not just for kids. It's for everybody. For anyway, anti-bullying. I didn't say for kids. Just anti-bullying. Um, <laughs> like I said, jiu-jitsu is very empowering. Yeah. Okay. Usually victims are, bull you know, there are different ways and scenarios of how somebody can be bullied yeah yeah okay well, sometimes it's mainly it's because of the bully himself yeah yeah he was bullied also okay and one thing i know that uh, a, a scenario that you can imagine how it mm. happens yeah. is that a bully feeds on somebody he thinks he can bully yeah makes okay. him like a victim or exactly. prey yeah. because if if a bully sees that this guy oh this guy he can put up a fight he's not gonna touch that guy. yeah yeah so somebody he thinks would be a good victim an easy victim mm-hmm Okay, and that's you know, and I'm not saying that's all there is to it. There's actually, you know, very complex ways of how bullying starts. I'm mm -hmm. a, I was a victim of bullying when mm -hmm. I was a kid. So how does okay. how does jujitsu help that? That's the thing. Like I said, jujitsu is a very empowering thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're a practitioner, you develop the confidence. Okay, on being able, physically able, just being physically able to do something, to be quick enough to avoid a punch, quick enough to block it. Quick, quick enough to counter a move okay even though you don't really have to do it it's there's a different energy that you exude when you're confident right yeah hell yeah, yeah. exactly so uh just the just the way you carry yourself i'm not saying monkey my or anything but you know um you can already tell if somebody's meek or not yeah if you're confident you won't appear meek you can be quiet but not meek okay so just just that in itself becomes a deterrent okay just the way you carry yourself because of the confidence that you have mm -hmm. becomes a deterrent already for most parts. Yeah, because you have if enough self-esteem. Yeah. Exactly, because you're confident, okay? And you won't appear like you're going to be an easy victim. So is this something okay. that you would recommend to parents out there to Definitely. enroll their kids into? And you do have kids' classes at Atos, right? Exactly. When, when do you have these, Coach? Um, we have branches uh, in Ateneo and in Jiu-Jitsu Manila and Green Hills. Mm -hmm. So just look uh, look at the Facebook pages of Ateneo, uh, of Atos Philippines. Yeah. Okay, so there are classes for Atos Jiu-Jitsu Philippines Atos Jiu because there's an Atos Philippines in Eastwood that's, yeah, that's like a BPO. A, that's a BPO, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, it's very empowering. Okay? Yeah. Aside from just the confidence yeah. of carrying yourself, uh -huh. if push comes to shove, then like I said earlier, you're going to be physically able to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You can defend yourself. Okay. One of my friends mentioned a term called fighter's IQ. You know what that fighter's is? Fighter's IQ. In other words, like the IQ of, of, as, of a fight, as, as a fighter. You can add that to the, you can argue to add that in the multiple intelligence scheme. You know? <laughs> That'd be actually pretty badass, you know what I mean? If they like, no, but like, it's like your basic IQ as a fighter. And one thing I've observed, like you got like competitor level people, like a shout out to one of my, my all time idols on the team, GND, who's yep. been like, he's done it, man. And, you know, you could see that this guy's a warrior because of all the battles he's fought. And this IQ translates into so many other things. It makes you really more like carry. Makes you carry yourself a different way. So, it, can anybody develop this by studying jujitsu? Yeah, yeah. Do you believe that everything is learnable? Yeah. Well, except some for taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's learnable, right? I mean, you know, some people have a natural instinct for mm -hmm. things. It becomes easier for them. Oh, no. we, we spoke about multiple intelligence yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people who have higher kinesthetic and uh, kinesthetic intelligence uh -huh. become they're the ones who are natural athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, learning or just seeing a move. You know, even though you haven't practiced it before, they can mm -hmm. easily pull it off just because they saw it. Yeah, Na some people are, are, yeah, exactly. are naturals but like that. Naturals, but it doesn't mean you can't learn it. You can learn it. So basically, hard work beats talent when talent refuses yeah. to work. 
work hard. All, all those, all those things. Yeah. That you okay, wait. Done, one of one of the, the text line is asking, Professor Sulit, have you ever fought MMA? Nope. Uh, why not? I mean, you seem to like be somebody who would have done well. Uh, um, I wanted to. Oh wow! Before I was married back then. Uh huh. Well, anybody who's uh, married would want to join I MMA. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is like <laughs> this is the last man's dream. <laughs> Please continue, though. Okay. Uh, but during that, that was at my prime. I uh -huh. was at my prime back then, and you know, when I wanted to, uh -huh. you know, Annika's mom didn't want to, yeah, and okay. I just had to respect that. See, already I submitted and tapped out. <laughs> but like with um, is MMA training? But we trained for it before. Oh, so it is, was it, part of our training. is it different than jujitsu training? A lot of training, training, man. You know, you thought you cried during our jujitsu competition training. Yes, this yes. Is something else. Really? You can't joke around, man. You're gonna get your face bashed in if you make a mistake. So the way you train for it is a lot more rigorous and more punishing. Okay, and you can't make any excuses. You're really gonna cry during MMA training if you're doing it properly. But like I've like I have one problem when I train in jujitsu is that I notice personally I hold back. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to hurt anybody. I mean, like there are guys that I, I will never hurt, like Bong, Matt, those guys. I'll never hurt them. But like when I roll with somebody, I notice that I always tend to hold back, and I'd rather be submitted than submit someone. Do you have mechanisms in jujitsu that can help like unlock that? You know that killer instinct in people when they rolls because it is ultimately still combat you can't be like hey are you okay buddy well i know the reason why you hold back because uh -huh. you're because of your size you're afraid to hurt people yeah okay it'll be easy because you know even though you're not really applying much force just one swing of your arm that's tremendous energy that can lead to you know a big impact mm -hmm. and you know a smaller guy might fling, fly to the wall because yeah. of it yeah but that's the thing it's a good quality to have you know the the ability to restrain yourself. I remember doing okay. one competition. It was during a roll up palooza. I was beaten. I was I was up against this guy, and I was I was dominating him, right? And he looked like he was in hell. And I said, "Are you okay?" And then Aldo shouted at me, "Stop asking if he's okay and finish him." Exactly. And that was actually a deterrent that the good the good guy in me got in the way of that. That was calm. That was calm. So, so how do you, do you how do that in calm? Yeah, but then it's a habit. So how do you break that kind of habit? It's a mindset. It's a mindset. It's a different mindset when you're in class. Mm -hmm. It's a different mindset in competition. I'm not saying that you should like not restrain yourself mm -hmm. in competition. It's a good quality to have. Okay, but even the way you restrain, there are levels of restraint. Okay, I mean the restraint that you apply when you you're rolling against somebody as big as you is different from the restraint level you're gonna you're gonna have to apply when you're rolling somebody who's half your size. Yes, of course. Okay, but that in itself is another skill to learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, um. Like I said, like I was saying, it's a good quality to have. Mm -hmm. you know, the idea that you do have to apply restraint, okay? But now the next thing to learn is how the level of restraint that you apply. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you, you want to learn how to do it. So, you know, that mm -hmm. and you can only get it through mat time, you know? I what mean, is mat time for our viewers? Mat time, the amount of hours you spend on the mats training yeah. and actually immersing yourself in it, okay? Because, you, you know, if you don't roll, you don't know. <laughs> You can only get it on the mats. Okay. And like, if you ask me, as one of the head coaches of the, or one of the coaches of the national team, and of course, the leader of Atos, what would you say is your biggest challenge? You know, moving forward, for, like for the national team, for the, for your own team. You know, because like sometimes it's like the question that would be at this point, where are you going to focus your energies? You know what I mean? Well, so, how what would you say is your biggest challenge? The challenge really is to happen to the people's motivations okay. which are usually it's different you know i mean especially if you want them to perform in the national team it's very easy i mean everybody there wants to perform every there are no recreational athletes there so everybody's out there to actually accomplish something uh -huh. okay so it's not that hard of a job to try and convince them to train hard and have to do it this way and that mm -hmm. way they, they know why they're there okay the challenge is during the regular classes because you know let's say in a class of 30 people you know, you have one segment of the population there who wants to compete. Yeah. Then you have a larger uh, part of the class who just wants to, you know, who just wants to enjoy it yeah. and learn. And you have a s another segment, a smaller one, who are still kind of lost. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of like rolling on the ground and all that <laughs> stuff, you know? And you have to address the needs of each and every student. Okay. I mean, that for me, that's one of the secrets of having a successful class. And if, if, if you can allow me to have the shout out, you know, it's it's a tough job, okay. I, I I was able to do it for a while when we were all just under one roof and we were just a smaller team, but it's it's difficult and almost close to impossible to try and do it by yourself. Yeah, of course. Okay, and just and I'm able to pull it off because I have a good team. I, I have a good faculty of instructors that assist me and help me out in managing the the classes, and I owe it all to them. Okay, uh, 
like there's Coach Rico, Gian, Erwin, Louis, Adrain, Aldo, Jessica, Mike, Anthony. Popo. Okay. Popo is there. Jay and Tonton Uy. I got Ram, you know. Uh, who else from my provincial? You have Ronald Gavileño. I'm sorry if I miss out anyone um, from HU. Si uh, Cyrus is yeah. there, okay? And the coaches from my kids' classes, Marlo, Luigi, um, Jamie. They're, they're a big help, man. Okay? And it's a testament to the nature of jiu-jitsu. I mean, you can't do jiu-jitsu alone. Yeah, There's always, it's for me. You know, anyway, you know, gusto sa jujitsu and judo. I mean, it's the very nature of the social aspect of being being us. Okay, mm -hmm. you need somebody. Definitely. You can't do it alone. Okay, mm -hmm. you can't do jujitsu rolling by yourself. You look like a you know a, a beached whale. Then I have a question <laughs> to ask for you, especially if it's a team effort. And this is still a combat sport, though. There's a t term we have in the practice. We call them spazzers, right? These are the guys who really like they torque out and then they yeah. really go they go too heavy on the mats. As a leader, yeah. How do you handle those kind of guys? That like you can see like the they're they're hurting people. They're people. You're the, the juniors are getting injured because of it because this guy can't yeah. control himself. Um, how do you handle that aspect? I mean, like, do you pull them aside? Do you teach them a lesson? You know what I mean? Um, do you reprimand them? I mean, how, how does a leader yeah. like you handle this? I just add a name to him. I yeah. mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Coach Henson also. Yeah, Henson. Coach Henson. Anyway. Um, yeah, there are there are characters. And yeah. there are... Um, that's the thing. Usually, before, I would think that there's this a guy. There's a guy who spazzes in class all the time. and ends up hurting a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, you have to temper them down a bit. Because, obviously, they don't understand that... You can be that athletic and you can be that explosive, mm -hmm. okay? And there are drills specific to the to that kind of playing, okay? But you can talk to them, dude, you know what? This is the third time in the week that you hurt somebody. Maybe we can tone it down a bit. And okay? if they don't, what do you if do? If they don't, then I step in. And how does that look? <laughs> you, like, you feel like a one-on-one -on -one super fight honestly, or something? What? <laughs> no, I've done this throughout the years. Okay. I, I deal with it two ways. Okay. One is I'll roll with them, uh -huh. okay? But I will roll with them with the least amount of strength and least amount of force, okay? Just to convince them that I can kick their ass without having to apply all the stuff that they do. Okay. Okay, just to show them the light. Yeah. Okay. You're gently, like, slapping their hand by doing that. No, I'm not slapping their hand at all. No, you know what I mean. I'm just, I'm just basically proving that I don't have to slap his hand to, yeah. to be effective in jiu-jitsu. Okay. See, because it is possible. Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, um... You know, like, you know, ju this this is, I'm a judo guy. So yeah. we always go back to some judo stories. You know, one thing that this this judo master said when he played with the founder, Jigoro Kano. Jigoro yeah. Kano is 5'3". Yeah. Okay. And he's a small guy. When when that guy was interviewed after playing with Jigoro Kano, that guy said, it's like playing with an empty jacket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? <laughs> Imagine, Diva. I'm sure, it, you know, it's more dramatic than how, yeah, it, yeah. how it was. But it, the way he said it, but... See, that's the concept that I'm following. Okay, I mean, I to teach him a lesson. I'm not gonna like beat him up. Mm -hmm. well, not all the time, but you see that you said there was a second thing you would do. I'm curious what that is. Yeah, the first. Him. Okay, have like you ever really, had to do that? Yeah. And then, like, what happens? It depends with, on the situation. Do they? Do they? Do they leave? Do they? No, no. I do it in such a way that they see the, they, they see the point. Because like, because okay, I'm. It's not gonna be. I'm not gonna be much of a teacher if the, the student ends up leaving. And you know what? That probably happened before also. Mm -hmm. Because you can't please everybody. Because like I've had the I've had the displeasure of rolling with you for the past seven years, and I know if you uh, went that nuts, that was my <laughs> no, no, my displeasure because I'm on the receiving end of an ass kicking, and I know that if you wanted, you could just rush me and judo toss me fifty feet in the air. But I, I see did. you're holding back. No, 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 not fifty feet, maybe five <laughs> feet. You know what I mean? But the thing is, I see you're holding back, so it's you gotta get scared. <laughs> it's like he's the guy who outweighs me so much, and I'm the one holding back. Yeah, well, you got the skill, man. It's not about size, remember? So like, so you, you have actually have. <laughs> had to, to, to really clean some guys clocks because of that in the uh, past. yeah I mean I adjust uh -huh. like I said as the instructor as mm -hmm. the coach sometimes I, I I have to adjust to the student the needs of the student even in extreme cases yeah. like that okay it I also have to assess the psyche of the student mm -hmm. I mean if if I just you know resorted to like you know do an ass whooping each time they do that and you know, the, the mindset of that guy is not prepped for that. Then mm -hmm. that guy might just leave and he won't learn nothing. And, and that's a reflection. A man, yeah. And that's a reflection of me as a teacher. And <laughs> I don't want that. What yeah. are you like, though, as a competitor? Like when you're the one fighting, um, because some people like I've noticed one of my friends, I, I guessed him on the show, uh, Coach Louis Misson. 
he becomes a total asshole during comp. He's like, he's not your friend anymore. Outside of comp, he's your buddy. But during comp, and you try talking to him, he's like looking into another dimension. He's not talking to you. God, God bless his soul. <laughs> but then after comp, he'll take you to drinks, take you out. You, what are you like during your competition? <laughs> do you have like this scowl? Do you like just meditate? Do you p pace back and forth? Like, what do you like? I don't know. Like I said, it was trial and error for me throughout the years. Yeah. Um, I've tried many different approaches. Mm -hmm. I tried it when I was so in the zone, mm -hmm. you know, but you kind of burn yourself out yeah. even before competition. Day. You did fight in the Mundials once, right? Yeah, I was purple. Belt. Okay, I was so, a lot younger. I was so a lot younger. like, what was, how did you prep for that? I mean, like, did you? Um, we, we did a camp. I mean, we trained in our, we belonged to a different team back then. Uh -huh. And uh, we spent like at least, I don't know, more than a week just staying in there. I, we slept in the academy. Damn. <laughs> so it was like training twice a day at least. And uh, yeah, we prepared for it. Mm -hmm. You know, won a match, lost a match. So in the Mundials, man, it's still a lot. Yeah, if, if they say if you win the match, you belong. But, you know, I'm, but I was just happy to be part of it. Do you ever have any uh, plans on, like, going for World Masters, Mundials again? We'll see. Damn. We'll see. I was, uh, there, I've, I've experienced some setbacks recently, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, yeah, I guess I can share this on air. Yeah. Um, I've, I've decided a long time ago that I'd be competing for the last time mm -hmm. this coming September in the Asian Open. Yeah. Already bought my tickets mm -hmm. uh, like some four or five months ago. I can't yeah. remember anymore. And then something happened. Uh, just exactly, yeah, a month ago, exactly. I, I had to undergo emergency surgery. Mm -hmm. It's not about any injury. I mean, they took out an organ. Ouch. Okay. Um, an internal organ. And uh, it's not my, no, my gallbladder. Yeah, okay. I, I had that thing. Yes. Um, and I can't train. I can't uh, actually do anything for the next month, one more month or even two. Do so you think you have enough time to prepare, or but that's the thing? If I'm gonna be like, if I'm gonna practice what I'm preaching, like I said, uh, you have to take competition seriously. I was planning to, uh, to have a three-month training camp for yeah. this. Okay, that included my strength and conditioning and my diet and everything, just to reach the two weight divisions I wanted to target. Because I already won uh, weight division, this one, this one. I wanted to go lower. Wow, it's welterweight. No, uh, middleweight. Because okay, it's middleweight. a challenge. Because if I'm just gonna keep winning the same thing, it's really what's monotonous. The point? Yeah. What's the point? You know, what's mm -hmm. to learn? Okay. What's to achieve there? You already done it before. Mm -hmm. right? So I kind of challenged myself by doing that. So even if I lose, I already won because, well, I lost weight. <laughs> yeah, it's a win win for you. By the way, got it's a, a shout out here. Hi, coach. Regards from everyone here in Bohol Island Jiu Jitsu. Thank hey, you, Tom Shout Tom out Lee. to everybody in Bohol Island Jiu Jitsu. Again, the Oro Iligan. Okay. Our friends in Valenzuela, uh, our, our teams uh, outside of Metro Manila. Now, okay. I wanted to ask you another thing, though. Aside from being a competitor, you're also a competition organizer. You're one of the people behind yeah. Rollapalooza. Yeah, yeah. shout out talk to my Rollapalooza partners, uh, GN and Rico. Yeah, so talk to me about that. What's Rollapalooza and why'd you put it up? Um, no, we just wanted to have a fun venue yeah. uh, for competition. I mean, you know, there's a need. You know, we have those serious competitions, right? Those yeah. big competitions, and everybody's just so the in Asian the zone. Open, the national. Yeah, everybody's you know I mean? just so in the zone. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Um, we just wanted to bring it back down to how it's how people started with jiu-jitsu basically they just wanted to have fun yes well yours is the yeah. rollapalooza is one of the only competitions that you can actually wear a multicolored gi right yeah <laughs> if you want to just goof off with uh, it it's like having a jiu-jitsu party you're like pong yeah. with this batman gi and stuff like yeah, we just want to keep it fun <laughs> yeah okay i mean it's a serious competition yeah. it's some people call it informal it's uh -huh. been dubbed as not a serious competition by one of the competition holders <laughs> but uh -huh. you know what it's I, it doesn't matter it's still a comp you're still fighting yeah. a guy and you, you know, you, you know, and you get a lot of really great competitors there. Yeah. Okay. And you see a lot of great jujitsu action. So, in you know, you can't call it not a serious competition. When when can we expect the next Rollapalooza? Uh, we're actually talking about it. We've discussed that maybe we should just hold it once a year. Uh huh. Um, but definitely plans are for October. October. Yeah. So cool. everybody so be on the lookout. For Rollapalooza 2019 this coming October. Amazing. It's a really fun comp. Even I've competed in Rollapalooza. Yeah. And I, I like the energy there because, like you said, it's it's not as yeah. as roided yeah. out. <laughs> I mean, people <laughs> are here having fun, you know, and it's not as it's not as you know constipated as some comps that I've been in. So, I mean, aside from that, though, thank you for bringing that to us. Now, for those people who are interested and who want to know more about you and about jujitsu and about Ali Sula Jiu Jitsu, uh, where can they reach you? Oh, well. Uh, I have my Instagram account, yeah. Ali Sulit Jiu Jitsu. Okay, mm -hmm. just check it out. Um, my Facebook is there. It's uh, open for the public, Ali Sulit. That's it. Okay, and uh, 
anything you wanna if you wanna inquire about the classes of Atos Philippines just look look for our Facebook page Atos Philippines okay and it's branches we have branches in Quezon City one in Ateneo mm -hmm. Fisher Mall BGC uh, we have in BGC we have in Makati um, we have in Green Hills mm -hmm. um, uh, the one in Pasig is yeah. being renovated at the moment okay Pasig and, we uh, have one in BC, Pasig yeah in Metro Oh yeah, yeah, but much work, much work. And um, what else? And we have in the province, we have Cebu, Cagayan de Oro, Bohol. Um, we have Iligan, we have Malay Balay, we have in Bukid. Cebu, non. yeah, we have Cebu, we have Cebu. Cebu. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty spread out. Cool. Um, we have Valenzuela, uh -huh. and we have um, affiliate branches in Bulacan, Batangas. Mm. So it's pretty spread out in Iloilo. Yeah, yeah. So for the last ten minutes of the show, we're gonna talk just basically light stuff. Favorite movie. Favorite movie? Depends. Thor. <laughs> Not really favorite movie. Uh, favorite movie. Uh huh. <sighs> top three? Yeah, top three. Fisher King. Uh huh. Train spotting. Uh huh. Big fish. Favorite superhero character? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, asking. Do I first? It's Batman, man. Okay, second. Uh, DC for Marvel. For Marvel? Uh huh. That's Thor, I guess. All right, all right. Uh, if you could have dinner with one person anywhere around the world, Anywhere and anyone, where would you want to have it, and who would you want to be with? Huh. The Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama. Okay. I've been... It would be so. Yeah, well, you know, if, it, if I say Tibet, that would be. Okay, so <laughs> you get up getting shot, dude. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, the Dalai Lama probably. In Vegas. <laughs> So contrasting. I know, right? You know, I, I'm thinking something contrasting or something appropriate. So, uh, probably the Dalai Lama in my favorite restaurant, just so you know, I can, you know. So for those of you wondering, his favorite restaurant is Ellen the Blackbird too. Let's get around. Okay, so most influential, aside from Professor Galvao, influential jujitsu to your personal game. To my personal game. Yeah, like it's like. Cause everybody got one of those. I mean, I tried to be Frank Mir, but I'm nowhere near it. So the game or <laughs> or your your own your no, your, your no. style. Game yeah. or or just mindset. Mindset, like, yeah, yeah, that works. Uh, this guy's really my idol when it comes to team management and uh -huh. building building a jujitsu team. It would have to be Professor Steve Roberto of Purebred Guam. Wow. Okay, I mean the way he runs his team there, it's not a team, it's a family. Wow. Okay, and it's grown so much throughout the years, and I look up to the guy so much. Um, during our early days competing in the Asian Open, he would adopt me and my other teammates to just bunk in, just to bunk in with them in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a witness to how well he would manage and inspire and motivate his guys. Okay, I just love the way he carries himself. You know, he's just full of confidence, and everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. He doesn't have to shout. He just says something. All the guys would just. Take respect, it as gospel. There's so much respect. Yeah, and, th and that's 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 something else, man. Especially nowadays when people have their own agendas yeah. and people have their own mindset. And for somebody to just speak softly and have everybody listen. That's, that's true That's really leadership. amazing. I remember uh, I, when we were in Japan and then we stepped out of the, finally we stepped out of the train mm -hmm. and went down into the city. He goes like, okay, take a good whiff, guys. Okay. That's the air the samurai breathe. <laughs> and then when he said that, oh my. It's like just <laughs> amazing. Okay, um, if you could have one dream match before you retire, oh man, well, anyone <coughs> in the world, anyone, huh? One dream match. I didn't say you're gonna beat them. Just saying, just dream match. Dream match. Yeah, like who would you want that roll with? That one match. Judo with? or jujitsu? Jujitsu. Jiu I, I gotta hear this one. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, um. Jiu-Jitsu match. You probably... Yeah, that's a tough one, man. I don't know. Okay, we'll get back to that. Pineapples really. on pizza, yes or no? No. No, why? No. <laughs> this is like pineapples on she pizza. She likes it. Oh, yeah, she's I normal. Know. You're not. Okay. Um, personal philosophy. Hmm? You. I mean, I can say it, but then I want to hear it from you. What's the personal... Like, we could sum up the whole vision of Ali Solid into like one phrase. Hmm? Yeah. Personal philosophy of yours. Because uh, I got one of them. I don't know how many of them you have. But I have a lot. Which one do you want? This, your favorite. Hmm? Your favorite. Um, moderation is key. Moderation is key. All right. So if you were to go out to a bar and I see you there, mm. what do I order for you? 
<laughs> you look like a Jack Daniels kind of guy, but I don't know, man. The viewers want to know this. I'll kick your ass, man. <laughs> of course, we all know that. <laughs> we all know that. So, so if we see Ali Sulit in a bar, what do we order for the well, guy? It depends. My favorite beer is not available locally. Yo, there's no Guinness, right? Yeah, all right, no so Guinness, Guinness. Let's stick with Guinness. If you can get him a Guinness, he'd be happy yeah, with a Guinness. Yeah, it's, it's just just because you know my I can't. You know, it's oh. not available here. Okay, so it's your <laughs> birthday. Where would you like to have? What, what, what would you like to eat? Where would you like to go? Where would you? Where would we potentially see you uh, on your birthday? This is the last five minutes of the show, man. I want the best day. Sure. Sheesh, it's like, that's tough. It's like me, I go, I'd want a steak. I don't know about you, man. Yeah, please be do so. Somebody commented there's something called apple beer. Is this true? You shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Haters be hated, man. What's wrong with apple beer? <laughs> well, I mean, if if Annika can drink it, I guess anyone can. <laughs> Haters gotta hate. Okay, okay. I didn't say that. That was from Haters Savior Lecter. Hate. I don't know who Savior Lecter is. Uh, it's from Mark oh. Okay, okay, okay. It's like uh, um, two books that really changed your life. Uh, well, The Alchemist is one. A good one, Paulo Coelho. Uh, and then I forgot the which one is better. Um, oh, it's uh, it's not a book. It's the the graphic novel. So oh. Neil Gaiman, the, oh. the Sandman series. Wow! And if I may ask, of all of the Sandman characters, who do you resonate with the most? Hmm? Yeah. Well, I, I guess almost everybody would say, say Dream. Yeah, yeah, Dream. But then, like, but the really, it would be Destruction. Oh, that's interesting. Why? Because he practices his ability to just drop everything and leave. Wow. Amazing, because like, I actually only got to read Sandman like two years ago because he kept on getting on my ass about it. I was more of a John Constantine kind of guy. Okay, so going back to it, um, if you weren't doing jujitsu, if you weren't teaching martial arts, what would you be doing with your life? I'd be writing. Wow, what kind of genre? I'm Mystery, thriller? <laughs> what? Huh? What kind of genre would you be writing? Exposés. No. Exposés. <laughs> <laughs> art of. No, somebody no. said the art of war. Yeah. Okay. The art of war sounds no, like no. I, that's from Kat Duque. Okay. I'd be writing. You'd be writing. Yeah. So you're a writer as well. I heard some, some one of the people here telling me that you're also a musician. Uh, <laughs> Coming yeah. out with an album soon? No, no. Okay. Well, that, that's a good question. Far. Favorite favorite song. Favorite song. Or music. I mean, like. Band song. You two. You two. What song? Uh, With or without you? <laughs> well, that's a staple. But one and uh, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Damn. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Professor Ali Sulit for tonight's episode of Mysterium After. That was a very enlightening segment. Once again, I'd like to say thank you to our sponsor, Crystal Age. Visit crystalage.ph online to get some top quality crystals visit their branches on magiting street and on maginhawa street to see some of the nicest most amazing crystals in the world so that being said professor sulit thank you very much Thanks for, for having enlightening me, Robert. me and all of our viewers about the noble and an amazing art of jujitsu next week we might have somebody special tune in with us i'll wait for the formal announcements but if you want to have your tarot cards read tune in thursday nights on mysterium philippines fan page for Tarot Thursdays, that's where I'm going to be pulling out the deck and reading for you guys in public. So, everyone out there, thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you. Play music all day long. Streaming worldwide. That's Future of Radio. is your all-hits, all-pinoy internet radio station. This is V8.